Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 19 of my Iron Man Hulkbuster inspired suit, which is standing just behind me. In the previous parts, I've built a frame that I can climb into, unlock all the joints and walk around, lock them up again, climb out and leave it standing there. So this suit is inspired by the Hulkbuster, which you may have seen in the trailer for Age of Ultron, which comes out next year. I'm building this to my own design, although some of it is inspired now the trailer's come out, the previous parts have been built before that trailer was released and no one knew what it looked like. So in the last couple of episodes I've been putting the chest plate on, the abdominal and rib section, which move with the arms here so they're all linked together to give it realistic motion. And today I'm going to do a little bit on the helmet, but I think it's going to span multiple parts. Right, we're really high up, I'm precariously balanced on stools and on toolboxes and stuff on the ceiling. It's just there, so we're actually right up, and uh, we're going to talk about how the helmet's going to fit on. So, hopefully, you can just see the shoulder bells there, just in shot. Yes, they are. So, um, the plan is that obviously we've got quite a lot of space here to build this helmet um, mechanism. So, in the movie, it kind of, uh, or in the trailer we've seen at least, it's rather similar to the suitcase armor where it kind of just disappears or comes out of nowhere. So, it appears to fold out, and then the faceplate magically materializes. Obviously that's going to be impossible to build, but uh, what we do need to do is build something in here that folds away so you can see the smaller Iron Man helmet inside or my head. And also I need to allow space for these if you remember from the previous episode where I built the uh, gold wing doors that open the panel in the back. So I've got two bits of wood in my hand. Um, we're going to basically build a removable frame. The other challenge is the ceiling is just here. So there's not going to be much space to um, actually put this whole mechanism on top, so it's going to have to be removable. So the first thing is to build a frame out of these two bits of wood and some 3D printed stuff that sits just in here, um, and then have pivot points. So basically we can have pieces that pivot around each side, um, and a piece at the back which is permanently going to be there but has a, a top that pivots over, and that's um, going to be too high for the ceiling. And then we're going to have another piece which will be the faceplate that I think is going to come out from below. So you kind of have this thing that comes around from the sides and and from below and above. So it's a bit like the faceplate in the movie and it's going to be styled um, like that, like the helmet. So it's going to have kind of gold bits at the side which kind of have the uh, a kind of jaggedy bit where the helmet is and, and a faceplate and a top that come and meet them. So uh, first of all we need to build the frame with a sliding top stroke back and some pivot points for the side pieces. So uh, let's have a look at what we're going to do with these bits of wood. So I've pretty much fleshed out what I'm planning here. So the, um, the two silver parts here are going to be the bits of wood which I'm going to spray silver. And then we've got this blue structure uh, which is going to basically be curved rails that go over the back of the head. And then the curved piece will um, roll on them to roll the top of the head out. So um, those are blocked out, they're all going to be 3D printed, um, and those curved pieces just about fit on the bed. Now unfortunately the width of this thing, so this blue girder at the back, um, doesn't actually fit on the bed. So I've divided that into two parts, and you can see there's a kind of cutout between them. So if I just shift one of these. So um, the aim is that we're going to print that in two halves, and then we're going to acetone weld it together, which should make a quite a strong piece. And then obviously the curved piece will be acetone welded onto that. So it's all going to be printed in ABS so we can use acetone to make a chemical weld. So after that we'll work on the carriage that runs on there. And then we're going to have two more pivoted sections on the two bits of wood. Which will deal with the sides of the helmet. So let's get that printed out and get it assembled and then we'll design the next part. parts. I've got these two pieces that go in the middle and I've got my two rails and I've also got these two bits. So all of this is going to be stuck together with acetone so the ABS dissolves in acetone we can make a chemical weld. So as with my previous parts I've got um, a small bottle of acetone and I've also got some ABS dissolved in acetone. 
which is extremely stinky, so you should do this in a well ventilated environment. And we're just going to take a small paintbrush and basically go and acetone weld this together. So these piles here, I've already taken a file to them. So I've gone and just basically cleaned up those edges to make sure they're perfectly flat. So I've taken the build lines out and right in that corner as well, I've just put that file in and uh, made the corner very sharp. Um, so basically these pieces fit together very neatly indeed. So uh, that'll make a much better acetone weld. So let's get some of this. And use some of this one as well. Basically the ABS dissolved in acetone works quite like a, a gap filler, whoops, so it makes a paste. Just thin that out and we should be able to just squish those together and hold it there for a few seconds. And that should stick together and make one solid piece ultimately. That part is just setting up on the edge of the bench here. I've just clamped it down to hold both pieces level while the uh, acetone sets and that will be done in a few minutes. So now we're taking these pieces, I've put pilot holes in to screw them um, into holes in these pieces. I'm just going through with the drill bit and just opening those holes up because they always come out a bit smaller than they should be. So, so I've screwed one of those on there just with two self-tapping screws and uh, basically the layer lines go this way in this piece so they go this way which means that the top and bottom surfaces are pretty tough, they don't split apart. If I screwed in that way, it would probably split the layers, uh, but this way it doesn't, so actually that's really tough as it is, so there's no need for an acetone weld. So I can just continue to screw these on and put the other spacer in, and we can get that stuck together. So that piece is assembled, and this piece is now stuck together, and it's nice and flat, so this piece now fits in here, which is going to be another acetone weld. So it's time to sit back for a moment and reflect on this, think about what to do next, have some coffee. You just put that down. Um, so this has actually come out really rigid. I'm really liking the way this has come together. These two layers with the spacers and the screws, um, I can twist that a tiny amount, uh, but overall this thing is, you know, it's so rigid. I don't know why I haven't really built bigger projects made of smaller pieces. Um, basically made in the same way, acetone welded and screwed together. You can make some really big structures. So I guess I have actually. Um, the other obviously running project in my channel is my 3D printed alien xenomorph head. Rawr! Have a look at the videos for that. Um, there is some wood in there though. Um, I could have replaced that wood with these parts for the main structure. And then that got me thinking and I was looking at this sort of on its side. Um, and I was thinking, you know, that's... You know, I've got almost a quarter of a quarter of a semi or a quarter of a circle there. Um, so I could make, if I had four of these and I kind of laid the parts and locked them together in the same way, I could make a, a huge cylinder. And then I was, I was looking at R2D2, which um, of course has got a similar structure inside, but made of wood, which is basically spaced with vertical bits of wood and horizontal rings. And I thought maybe, you know, I could almost print out a whole R2D2, at least the mechanical parts, the frame, the legs and those parts, um, and this is only 20% infill, so it's not solid plastic, so that means that this is five times lighter than it would be if it were solid plastic, cut from a sheet perhaps, or wood. So you could make a really light R2-D2, which would solve loads of problems, because having the batteries and everything in a wooden droid or a metal droid makes it really heavy, um, and having the leg, the 2-3-2 conversion, so it can go on two legs and then the centre leg can pop out and um, you know the legs move apart. It's quite a lot of forces there. So if you made it five times lighter in plastic and the whole thing was 3D printed and it's still really rigid, um, you could use smaller batteries, it would be much easier to carry it and move it around instead of having to take the legs off, you could just pick it up. So um, yeah, I know I've got too many projects, but that's something that's in the back of my mind now. Anyway, let's get on with Hulkbuster. A bit of behind the scenes. There's the toolbox, 
there's the tripod and I have to stand on here. Alright, here we go. So, here are my bits of wood which are going to fit in here. They may be up at an angle like this, it really depends if I want to adjust the angle of the actual helmet. I think they're going to be, have to be anyway to allow the pivots. And then I've got this piece which fits in here and that's going to screw onto the back of the pieces of wood each side. So it'll fit just like that, so uh, that's looking okay at the moment. Pretty sure my head fits in from the back, but I'll get inside in a second and we'll just check. And then the uh, sliding piece is going to come back on the outside of this, it's going to have wheels that grip either side, and that'll slide the top of the helmet right over, so it should make the helmet about 30 and a bit centimetres from the shoulders here. Right, let's just clip that on. Here I go. So, hopefully, yeah, that's well clear of my head. So, um, shouldn't have any issues there. And I think I can fit my other Iron Man helmet in. I can make this um, a couple of centimetres higher as well, as I say, by jacking up those bits of wood on some blocks. So we should have just enough clearance. Here's one of the next parts. There's going to be two of these facing each other. So basically this is a thing with four wheels that runs on one side of the rail. There'll be another one on the other side. And then these basically these guide points um, that we've got on each side here are for another piece to fit in each side. And that other piece is going to link the two of these together and also provide the bracket to hold the plate on which slides over the top. So you've probably seen enough footage of 3D printing, so I'm just going to get some of these printed and get it assembled and then move on to the next part. So I've printed my two opposing roller parts, which you can probably just see there. So there's one on the top and one on the bottom, and I've got these um, steel spokes which have got the rollers on each end. So this now rolls quite smoothly up and down. It's a little bit noisy, there's a few uh, 3D printing um, artifacts on the rollers so they need smoothing out a bit but essentially that moves incredibly smoothly and that's going to hold the panel that slides up to make the top of the head so that can slide over so the plan for motorizing this is to use um, a normal hobby servo which will be hacked for continuous rotation which means taking the end stop off taking the feedback potentiometer off so it goes round and round and round and then just using that as a normal geared motor and that's going to be mounted somewhere on here and there's basically going to be a stretchy piece of line which is going to act like a drive belt which will go from one end to the other it will go round the pulley on this several times and off again so as this motor turns it pulls itself up and down the line and that line is going to be tensioned with a spring at one end and it's almost always going to be a triangular shape but at some point uh, the sides will be different lengths so it won't always be a constant length so it needs a spring to take up the slack and that's going to drive that panel up and down so now we need to do the parts which are going to deal with the sides that open and close and come round to the front. Here we go so far, so the carriage is not shown um, in this diagram, but I have added these additional parts on the side, which are basically um, parts that swivel round to take the side of the helmet round. So uh, these are made up of a blue part, which is, in fact all the parts are blue, but the blue part at the bottom which is screwed to the wood, and that can be moved backwards or forwards, um, to adjust wherever I want it. Of course the silver part is wood so I'm just going to use two screws to hold that on. Um, and that part's basically half a pulley which will allow the other piece on top to pivot around so the upright round piece there is going to be an 8mm bolt. And then on top of that I've got this um, blue part, another blue part, which will swivel round. And that's got space in there for another RC servo to be mounted. And that servo is going to have a pulley on the bottom. And that pulley will be at the same height as the half pulley. So um, a piece of cord will go around the half pulley anchored to two screw holes at the back. And as the servo turns, uh, basically the smaller pulley on the servo will therefore move around the bigger half pulley, uh, basically pulling itself around the piece of cord. So we'll get those printed and let's stick those on as well and try and size it all up. Uh, right, I'm up here and I've got a pen in one hand and the other pieces in the other hand I'm going to attempt to work out how far forward the front of the helmet needs to be and I think it needs to be hmm somewhere there 
want it to stick out too much, so probably not much further forward than the front of the chest here. This corner here, I think. It's going to be slightly curved, so that should be good, and that gives space for the very top of that to come over just in front. So I think that lines up quite well. Alright, so I'm going to try and make a pen mark. And now I can centre the 8mm bolt with this. Alright, so I just needed something to help visualise um, what that's likely to look like with the dome front and that placement, um, given the size of the whole helmet and the approximate width, it's going to be a bit wider than that. But on the whole, I think that's probably going to look okay. It's going to be slightly higher, of course, as well. But in terms of front to back, looking at it from the side as well, I think that's probably just about the right place. Okay, we're up here again. Um, so I put these bolts in, the two 8mm bolts. They're not actually bolted into the wood yet. They're just screwed into the semicircular pulley pieces. And obviously I've just got a couple of washers and I've just got these things so they pivot round. So the closed position is when these are both facing forward. And then there'll be two panels which come to make the front of the face essentially, or at least the sides. And as I mentioned, the actual face will pop up from below and the top will pop up on this carriage. So the whole thing will enclose and these two will come around which will probably be the top of the head and the sides. And then these two will swivel out as far as they need to, taking those panels sideways. So that's basically going to be the motion of those. So we'll have this thing pop up maybe, that could even have another piece with a pivot that pivots down on the front, haven't really decided. Those two will close and finally the faceplate will come up to meet so all of the four sections meet from all directions. So that's all I'm actually going to make this time. I'm taking my time with this piece to make sure that it's mechanically sound and structurally sound because the uh, faceplate opening and closing is going to be quite a big part of the effect of the suit. And ultimately it's a costume, so the whole thing's for show. So I might as well make sure that mechanically it makes sense. Um, and basically when the faceplate closes and opens, it looks good. It doesn't wobble too much. doesn't get jammed. It's the last thing I want to be problematic. Um, so next time I'm probably going to have a go at trying to make some panels to fit on there. And after that we'll deal with the electronics, which we need to do for a lot of the other parts in the suit anyway. So um, lessons learned from this time are that... Basically, this structure is really strong. I'm still really impressed with how that's come out with those parallel 3D printed parts. So I probably could have cut out loads of the wood in this project by using similar structures of 3D printing. So that's quite interesting for the future, for other projects and for other bits of this project that still need to be made. So we can make some quite elaborate structures. You could probably build um, a small building in the same fashion with lots of small parts fitted together with brackets. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the future update and the previous 18 or so parts on this project and my 3D printed Alien Xenomorph project and all the other projects in my channel. Uh, don't forget my social media pages. I also have a Facebook group for group projects. If you join that group, be very careful to check out the rules pinned to the top. We're doing some specific projects and eventually I'll be doing some update videos in my channel about those projects. So if you do something really good in that project, You'll be able to get some exposure and you'll be able to get your name in my channel. Also, don't forget my Patreon crowdfunding campaign, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me, and the next one is coming up shortly. And that's at patreon.com slash xrobots.